seeing what they're doing and you seeing how their stocks are trading and things like that. Okay, so now you got this. You you, you got the app. You got the you got your watch list built up. Like, mm-hmm. let's go through like the buying power. Okay, you you've taken a little bit of your savings. You've pinched off your savings. You you got mm-hmm. bucks, a hundred bucks, or you know twenty bucks, whatever you can kind of pinch off. You got your watch list built. Now take me through the buying or the buying of a stock. Like when you're ready to hit the trigger on it, what's your indicator to say, okay, this is a good buy at this price? Okay. So um, let's talk, we'll talk fundamentally. Um, so fundamentally, when I look at a company, I look at their financials, what did their cash flow look like? You know, what are you know, what are their operation? budgets look like, you know, what are they spending their money on? Are they still spending their money on research and development? Are they coming out with innovative products? Are they coming out with innovative processes? You know, are they buying other companies? Are they on the forefront of technology and moving in a space in which they lead? All right, so I look at a company in that way. And so from that point, from that standpoint, um, if all of those check off and I'm just like, yeah, I, I really like this company from a visual standpoint. And I'll look at kind of where the, where the, the stock price is. Um, and I tell people all the time, stock price doesn't give you the value of the company. Okay. It gives you the value of the demand of the stock, right? Because a lot of times you'll see companies price shoot through the roof. you be like, this company isn't worth that much. Right. Um, I saw, a uh, company today price go up like 400%. And I'm just like, this is not what this company is really worth. This is not the value of this company. It is the value of the demand of the stock at that time, right? So you have to be kind of careful when you are purchasing stock. And so what I do is I'll look at the stock price. I'll determine if the price is uh, a reflection of demand at that time and people are just driving it up or if it's a good valuation of where the company is and you can you can uh you know they they put out reports to tell you kind of uh you know how the company has done over the last quarters uh over the last three months they'll give you reports how much money they've made and so you can kind of uh judge if the price makes sense you know, if they've been losing money, but they're trading at, you know, a thousand dollars a share, you know, why is the price so high and they're still losing money? You know, are they putting a lot of money into research and therefore losing the money? Um, or are they not researching? They're just, you know, putting out products and they're not bringing any money in. All right. So again, you'll look at it and say, well, this doesn't make sense. It's thousand dollar price per share doesn't make sense with what's going on with the company. So if I do find a company where I say, okay, this price looks good. Uh, Price may be distressed because of what's going on. I could take advantage of these low prices or the company may have been in trouble and they worked their way out of trouble. But, uh, you know, a lot of people went away from the company because they were in trouble. Uh, You know, and I say, okay, I think this company can turn itself around. It's what they were valued at before they went through kind of their process of getting back, uh, right? Um, you know, I'll go in, uh, take funds, um, and, you know, put in a buy order. Uh, and, and it's simple. You know, a buy order is basically hitting the buy button. Right? You tell your brokerage, Robinhood, how many shares you want. Uh, so, for example, let's say a company is trading at $10 a share. If I want to buy 10 shares, that's $100. I put my $100 in my account. Uh, go on Robinhood and say, I want to buy 10 shares. And I hit buy. Um, and, and there are you know, a couple things that I'll tell people. Uh, two main ways to buy, uh, two main ways to sell. Um, there are other ways, but they're more advanced level. Uh, one is just buying on market, right? So you hit the button, say, give me 10 shares. I don't care how much they cost, give me 10 shares. Right? And so your order goes out. And then the cheapest 10 shares it can find, it goes and buys them and bring them back to you. So that may be a share, one share at $10, maybe one share at $10.20, maybe one share at $10.50, maybe one share at $11, right? Until you get your 10 shares, right? And, and you get your 10 shares and you get an average price. And so your average price for the 10 may be more than $10. All 
Uh, so that's market, going to market and making a purchase. Uh, if you set a limit, right, you tell Robinhood how much you want to pay for each share. So I go in there and I say, Robinhood, give me 10 shares of this company and I only want to pay $10 per share. So I put that order in and now they will only purchase shares when the price hits $10. Hmm. Now I may not get all my shares at once, uh, but they every time the price gets to 10, they'll purchase one. And so those are the main two ways to acquire shares in the market. I tell people, unless you have to get in a position uh, really fast or have to get out of a position really fast, you always want to set a limit and tell it how much you want to pay for it. It's really good practice. Uh, uh, it keeps you disciplined, right? You do your, your work and you say, all right, I'm willing to purchase this at $10. You know, be disciplined and not pay $10.01 for it. Be disciplined and not, you know, oh, it's only two cent more, pay ten oh two, right? Because as we gain more capital, you know, you if you go from buying 10 shares to 10,000 shares, now paying that extra two cent over $10, which is 20 cent, you're paying an extra 10 cent over 10,000, which is $20, right? If I'm doing that right. Yeah, $20, right? So you, you see how being undisciplined and saying, I want it right now can have you paying more than what you want to pay. So um, um, that's why I say, you know, it, and it's easy. Like I said, you, you put your money in your brokerage account, you go to the stock, hit buy, tell Robinhood how you want to buy, whether it's market or limit, and then purchase it. I'm good. You, I'm glad you brought that up because me, you know, not knowing anything about it, I just go in, I just hit, Hey, I want, I see this, uh, I see this share. Oh, it's going for the low. Let me get, let me get three of those. Let me get five. Yeah. I'm at the menu and I hit the buy button and it just goes out and buy it. And you're like, Oh, now you got your order in. You bought it. Hey, uh, cool. I'm good. I'm, move, I'm moving on to the next. Not knowing it's charging me an extra five cent, 10 cent. And like you said, when it's, when it's small amounts, it's not really a, a huge deal. But when you start buying 10, 20,000, you start really putting that big money in there. That's, yeah. a, that's an extra chunk of change that you wasn't even expecting. On the, right. back end, on the back end side. So that, that's a really good thing. That's a really good knowledge to have because me personally, I, I don't know about it. So I'm just hitting buy and I'm just a normal guy. And that's how probably normal people are going to do it when they first start off. They're just going to hit buy and they're just going to go in and just pay for it like that. So that's some good knowledge that you put out. So now we, we, we got the app. We got the information. We got our, we got our watch list. We, we bought our first one. Now we, we, we're patiently waiting. We're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. When do we get in there and when do we say, hey, look, it's time to get out of this position. We, we, we bought it at $10 and, you know, it, it was doing good the first day and a half. You know, the first week is doing good. You know, day 12, all right, I, I see the market is, you know, having a, it's, it's a panic day. It's Tuesday. It's panic day in, in the market. The market, yeah. the market is, you know, the cap down and it, it, it falls below $8. Am I, is it something that you are, I know an experienced trader would probably not panic, but for someone who's like an amateur like me, and I go in, how do I get out of the position quickly? So you get out of the position before you get in the position. Well, I'm saying, well, if I bought it and now it's 10 days, 10 days out, and then all of a sudden it goes down to $8, should I keep it? Should I, should I, should I keep ride it out, ride it back up? Should I put more money in now that it's gone down? Like, give me some of those 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 things. I know you've been there before, so I know you kind of got an idea. Like, if the position mm -hmm. down, do I kind of do I'm, I'm kind of sitting back like, okay, I know it's gonna go back up, or do I, I panic and get get out of it? So give me your thought process when that happens. So I know it sounded weird when I said it, but I actually said it right. So you get out of the position before you get in the position, right? Okay. So before you take a position in any company in any position, you already want to know what your parameters are. Uh, you want to know if this drops below this amount, whether I'm going to sell it, whether I'm going to buy more, or I'm going to let it stay. All right. So you 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 got to know before you go into a position. So I always have those numbers in my head, right? If I buy something at ten dollars, and this is just for an example, I know if the first. So let's just say I want ten of something at ten dollars. I'm willing to spend. $100, and I can purchase it for 10. Uh, uh, you know, 